You've probably heard that a high protein intake is good for weight loss and muscle building, and it's true. But how much protein do you really need? And how do you divide protein throughout the day? Well, that's what we're gonna cover in today's video. I'm gonna demystify this topic of protein for you. And the way we're gonna do that is we're gonna go back into our YouTube archives. I'm gonna bring forth one of my best videos that I've done about ideal protein intake. Specifically, I'm gonna cover the exact number that research shows that you should aim for throughout the day both in terms of grams and a percentage of your total calories. I know you're gonna find this very valuable, but importantly, I'm gonna help you make this so simple that you don't need to pull out a calculator or some fancy app to figure out how much protein you intake. I'm gonna show you just general portion rules to fit this in. This is gonna help you a ton. Let's get into today's video. Let's get straight into it. The first thing I want you to know is that there is something called an RDA, which stands for Recommended Daily Allowance for Protein. And these are guidelines set by large government agencies that have researched how, what is the basically the minimum amount of protein that humans need to maintain what we consider baseline health. Like the average person, what do they need? And here are the RDA guidelines. It is around 0.8 grams of protein per kilogram of body weight, which is equivalent to 0.36 grams per pound. So for a 200 pound person, this is roughly equivalent to around 72 grams of protein. For someone who's 150 pounds, this is around 54 grams of protein. So this is not a lot of protein. We're talking like 50 to 70 grams to maintain, maintain like baseline functioning. And the reason we need this amount of protein is because we're doing activity. Our body has uh, muscles that are made out of protein, right? So we need skeletal repair. Our organs require amino acids from the protein to, for building blocks. Our, our neurotransmitters in our brain and all these hormones and chemical signals require these amino acids to basically reconstitute the cells that are constantly dying and turning over in our bodies. That's why we need protein generally. But it turns out that these RDA recommendations are not optimal. These are baselines, but you as a person who's probably interested in health, fitness, weight loss, you actually need more protein, but maybe not as much as you think. So this brings us to section two, what is the optimal amount of protein? And to get right into the big punchline here is the optimal amount of protein is actually around 1.6 grams per kilogram or 0.73 grams per pound. And I didn't make these numbers up. I'm gonna show you the research in just a second um, that backs these claims up, but this roughly equates for a 200 pound person to around 150 grams of protein per day. And for a 150 pound person, it's around 110 grams per day. So in the fitness circles, there's a lot of people who say you should be eating one to two grams of protein per pound body weight. So that a lot of people who are like uh, 150 pound people looking to gain muscle are eating 150 grams, if not 200 grams of protein. It turns out that's more than you actually need. So I wanna show you the studies that actually back this up. Um, first one is from a researcher named Wahlberg, um, who's from the Virginia Tech University. And he did some research um, comparing high protein diets versus like the 0.73 grams per pound um, when people were in a weight loss, um, fat loss phase, they're in a calorie deficit. And he found that 0.73 grams per pound was enough protein to make sure that they didn't lose, the weightlifters in the study didn't lose any muscle mass. So you don't need to eat much more over that 0.73 grams per pound body weight to maintain muscle mass if you're losing weight. And protein is beneficial for weight loss diets because it keeps you full, it gives you a slight metabolic boost and it preserves your muscle mass. And the sweet figure is 0.73 grams per pound, or again, 1.6 grams per kilogram. And that's on the fat loss side of the equation. But what about muscle gain? Is there a benefit to eating more protein over these two recommendations? And it turns out there's really not. So another great protein researcher, um, I'll just, last name is Tarnop Polosky, so a good Polak there. Um, 0.64 grams per pound versus 1.1 grams uh, per pound. Compare those two. So we have 1.1 grams per pound versus 0.64. And he was trying to see if the high protein 1.1 grams per pound led to greater muscle mass gains than the 0.64, which is lower than our recommended um, optimal intake here, but very close on. And he found that the 1.1 grams per pound produced no more muscle mass, no more positive nitrogen retention than the 0.64 grams per pound. So basically eating above this figure right here, just 0.73 or 1.16 grams um, will not lead to additional muscle mass. And what actually happens is when we eat more protein than we actually need, aka these figures, our body just burns it off. There's something called protein oxidation, where we basically take the protein, can convert it to glucose, and can burn it off for energy. So if you eat more protein above these figures, it's not like that protein's being constituted into your cells for building more muscle, you're just converting it and burning it for energy. So it's just calories. Um, so what does this actually mean, practically speaking? Well, 
Let's say someone has a 2,500 um, calorie diet, which is like a baseline calorie diet for a lot of people out there. Um, that means that this person is probably, let's say they're around um, 200 pounds. That means they're eating around 150 grams of protein per day. And breaking that down, that means that they're having around 30 to 40 grams across, let's just say four meals. So let's just say they're having uh, three meals and one snack, then they can probably get away with having 30 grams of protein in breakfast, lunch, and dinner, and a snack of like 20 grams. And that gets you very close to that 150 gram figure. Um, and it also means that 150 grams of protein of 2,500 calories is roughly around 20 to 25% of your calorie intake per day. So if we looked at your total calorie load for the day, you don't need more than 20 to 25% of those calories coming from protein. Again, if you make that number any higher, you're just burning off that protein, converting it to energy and using it for, you know, basically like you would use carbohydrates and fats. It's not giving you any additional benefit unique to protein itself. So this is very important. So the practical advice here is that most people are gonna wanna look to get around 30 to 40 grams of protein across the meals. This obviously is based on your meal timing setup. If you're intermittent fasting, for example, and you're skipping one meal out of the day and having just like a lunch and a dinner, you might need more like 50 grams of protein in each of those feedings. And that's totally fine. Your body can process that. It's about your net protein intake for the day. But if you're having like a breakfast, lunch, snack, and dinner kind of setup, then again, 30 grams of protein in each of those meals is plenty fine. Really good, very easy. And if you add in a little 20 gram protein shake in the middle of the afternoon, you hit your target perfectly. So to give you a context of what 30 grams of protein is, that's roughly around 4.5 ounces, like a tiny portion, like the palm size for portion of, of this, even smaller than this, of any kind of animal protein, fish, chicken, steak, etc. So it's not a lot of protein. The average chicken breast that looks like something like this might be around six to seven ounces, which is more like 50 to 55 grams of protein. So you don't need as much animal product to reach these numbers. And again, it's about your total calories. So if you're choosing to eat way more protein than you actually need for these optimal figures, again, you're just gonna burn that protein off. It's gonna get converted to glucose via gluconeogenesis, and you're gonna oxidize that whole protein in a process, and it's not gonna give you any more benefit. That's not to say you can't have more and it'll necessarily harm you. Again, there's a lot of research showing that higher protein intakes are safe on your kidneys as long as you're drinking enough water, but I wanted to give you this video to show you that we need more protein than the RDA, this is a very low number. These are the optimal figures. Again, 1.6 grams per kilogram or 0.73 grams per pound, which again is roughly for a 200 pound person around 150 grams of protein. For a 150 uh, pound person is roughly around 110 grams of protein. Divide that up across a couple meals is around 30 to 40 grams of protein in a couple feedings. If you throw in a protein shake or a high protein snack in the middle of the day, you will hit those numbers easily. So protein is very important but it's not something we necessarily need to go overboard because there's a lot of other great nutrients we need. We need healthy fats. Um, we can very much benefit from fibrous carbohydrates. And if you're an athlete from some starchier carbs to refuel glycogen stores, so many amazing things we need to do, but that hopefully demystifies the protein equation. And again, looking at your total calorie intake for the day, protein should make up around 20 to 25% of your calories. It doesn't have to be all the way up at like 50%, like some um, uninformed bodybuilders do where they think they need way more than they actually need. It just ends up being um, expensive carbohydrate, I guess you could say. So I hope you found this valuable. If you actually want some help losing fat and building muscle and taking this kind of nutrition advice and making it very practical and getting an exact step-by-step -step meal plan, then scroll below in the description and check the comment that we're gonna pin below as well. That gives you our free one-day weight loss meal plan for fit fathers. And if you're a mom watching this video or a busy woman, we have our free Fit Mom Jumpstart that gives you our exact step-by-step -step meal plan, what to eat for breakfast, lunch, snack, and dinner, and we give you workouts free as, as well. We'll send that straight to your email. So check those links below. Thank you for being here, my friend. Again, I'll also link in some of the research so you can see this stuff for yourself. Um, this is all based on the science, and I hope you found this valuable. I hope this helps you. And if you love this stuff, subscribe to our channels. We literally have hundreds of videos just like this on demystifying some nutrition myths, but also exact workouts, meal plans, how to build muscle, lose fat, especially if you're a busy person in your 40s, 50s, and 60s, we're the Fit Father Project and the Fit Mother Project. This is what we do. And if you like this, hit the like button, give us a thumbs up. This helps us spread this video and it really helps this channel a lot. So we'd appreciate that as well. Thank you, my friend. I'll see you in our future videos. Check out those resources pinned below and I'll talk to you very soon.